abreast. Photo finish. I don't know what to say. I just, uh, play the music. Two straight days of getting to play an underrated national anthem. Man, it's been a fun time on the channel recently. But oh my god! A three wide finish for the win at Atlanta. Pew, pew, pew. I, I, I don't know what to say here, man. This That was incredible. This whole race was actually incredible. I have been... A skeptic. I was not a big fan when they announced that they were going to turn Atlanta into a super speedway. I cannot deny it. That was a fantastic race, and that is an all-time great finish right there. Look at, th look at it again. Look at it again. Daniel Suarez, Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney keeping it clean. Three wide at the stripe. Three 1,000s from Suarez to Blaney. Three 1,000s from Suarez to Busch. Or 7 1,000. Sorry. I'm excited here. All the numbers are jumbling around on the page because I'm excited. I'm shaking because I've done, I, 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 that, that was amazing. It was great. What else can you say about it? It's an all-time great finish. You know what? The incident happens. This race had everything in it. It had a little bit of chaos. Some crashes. We saw a lap two crash that involved 16 cars. 16. Now it only took out two or three. But 16 cars were involved. Throughout the night, we saw all but six, seven cars involved in a wreck at some point. We saw the most lead changes in Atlanta history. Now, you could put an asterisk on that and say, you know, well, Atlanta used to not be a super speedway type of racetrack. But we saw different leaders from different teams. We saw Daniel Suarez leading. We saw Daniel Suarez win the race. A huge win for his career, by the way, which we will get to in a minute. We saw Ryan Blaney lead laps. Kyle Busch. Todd Gilliland led the most laps in this race. Prior to this year, Todd Gilliland had only led 11 laps in his career. He's had back-to-back -back weeks of leading double-digit laps, and he led 57 tonight, I believe. We saw Chris Buescher lead laps, Truex, Larson, lots of different guys up front. And the thing about this compared to a Daytona or a Talladega, with this car, it's a little bit more difficult to make moves in the super speedway, but at Atlanta... It's like the perfect combination. We saw it in July at Atlanta in the summer. We've seen it here today again. You can get those runs. You can back up to the car behind you. You can get these huge runs like in the old generation car and make moves that you can't really make at Daytona Talladega because it takes so much to get those kind of runs. And we saw that tonight. And we saw great racing. Once again, I was a skeptic. I was not the biggest fan of New Atlanta. I was like, why are they turning this iconic mile and a half into a super speedway? What idiot decided that? And now I know why they did it. For this, for this exact reason, we had a fantastic 10 out of 10 race. We had an all-time great finish. Let's talk about it. The last five laps of this race, I did not think we're going to go clean. Props to all the drivers in the field in those last five laps for keeping it clean, especially Ryan Blaney, Kyle Busch, and Daniel Suarez. Blaney seemed like he had this thing figured out. He was blocking every lane. He was using everything to his advantage, and he was able to maintain the race for the last four and a half laps. And then that last lap, coming down the backstretch, Kyle Busch gets a big run, and he's able to get to the outside of Ryan Blaney. And because of that, Suarez is already on the outside of Kyle Busch. They're three wide heading into three. Kyle Busch and Ryan Blaney side-drafting each other. Suarez side-drafting Kyle Busch. They're three wide through all of three and four. And I'm like, they're not making it through this clean. They're going to wipe each other out. And oh boy, was I wrong. Not only that, they stay three wide the entire way to the flag and literally finish like this far apart from each other. When I say iconic finish, that, that is the definition of an iconic finish. I, I, I don't know what else to say about it. It was iconic, it was amazing, and we got a fun winner out of it. Daniel Suarez gets his second career NASCAR Cup Series victory. His first on an oval, remember that first one in 2022, came on a road course, and that was a, this is a huge, huge win for Daniel Suarez. There were a lot of questions about Daniel Suarez entering 2024. 
Was he going to stay at Trackhouse? Was Trackhouse going to extend him? Suarez, we talked about that 2022 win at Sonoma, made the playoffs, fell short, got eliminated in the round of 12. But 2023 was a disappointment. Did not go to victory lane, missed the playoffs entirely. It was a disappointment. And he had to watch his teammate Ross Chastain win a couple races, make the playoffs. So, and we even saw a part-time car win a race. It was a disappointing year for Daniel Suarez. So coming into this year, with all the questions, with some doubters, some people questioning him, including myself, I did not have him in my 16 playoff field, 16 driver playoff field. Daniel Suarez came out here and he silenced all the critics and he silenced the haters and he won himself his second career cup series race. Drove a great race tonight, only led a handful of laps, but he led the most important one as well. But as I said, a career-defining win, maybe. A career-extending win, maybe. Because Daniel Suarez, that win could indeed get him a contract extension in that 99 car. Um, not just it being a contract year for him, but also the pressure of having Zane Smith on a contract with Trackhouse. Shane Van Gisbergen on a contract with Trackhouse. It was putting a lot of pressure on Suarez because Chastain, he's winning multiple races a year with Trackhouse. He's not losing his seat. So Suarez, the pressure was on him, and what does he do? Two races into the season, he wins a race. So Daniel Suarez is into the NASCAR playoffs for the second time in his career. He's in the playoffs on a win, uh, but what a finish. Let's go to the results. In these results, I'll talk about the race itself. I'll talk about all the wrecks that got triggered, all the wrecks that happened in this race, because there were a lot of them. Daniel Suarez is your winner, as I have said. And once again, this is not just a year-defining victory. It could be a career-defining victory. With the pressure behind him from SVG and from Zane Smith, with that contract year, needing to make the playoffs, needing a win, he does it early. He doesn't wait till a road course later in the season. He doesn't wait till you know, a super speedway late in the season. He does it in race number two of 2022. Takes some pressure off of his shoulders, knowing he's in the playoffs, knowing he's got that win. They can take more risks this year. Daniel Suarez is a two-time NASCAR Cup Series winner. And I mean, it's it, I, it's impossible to dislike the guy. When you see him win, when you see him, you're just happy. I mean, how could you not like this win? It's going to be a very popular one, if you ask me. Uh, but Daniel Suarez, what a race for him. What a win for him. Second place, Ryan Blaney, heartbreak for the defending champion. Uh, almost got his first win as a Cup Series champion, his first win in his title defense. Did a great job those last four and a half laps defending, but once again, that last half lap ultimately is what cost him, and there wasn't much he could do. He would have had to wreck the entire field in order to try to keep the lead. That was about the most logical thing he could do without wrecking the field, so much respect to Blaney for keeping it clean there, but... Congrats. You're a part of an iconic photo finish. Once again, Ryan Blaney's a really good at being a part of these iconic photo finishes. He's got two wins in photo finishes at Talladega. He's got a couple at Daytona. So Ryan Blaney is really good at these photo finishes, and he's probably at a 50-50 split in terms of win-loss, but a great finish for him. Third place, Kyle Busch. Man, Kyle Busch wins the truck race on Saturday. Had a fast car throughout the weekend. Had a great shot to go for the kind of sweep you know he wasn't in the Xfinity race but he has a great opportunity to get himself the win to get his first win of 2024 and he made a great move on the outside of Ryan Blaney but ultimately Suarez gets him by that much and Blaney gets him by that much but what a thrilling finish once again Kyle Busch on the wrong side of a photo finish but it's a great finish for him regardless now we're going to go to some guys we haven't talked about yet. Austin Cindric finishes fourth. He did win stage two. That's a playoff point for Austin Cindric. Missed the playoffs last year. But Cindric, uh, it was a really good day for him. A lot of points. Let a good chunk of laps. I want to say 30 or 40 laps today. It was a great race by him. He's always been a great super speedway racer. And when I say super speedway racer, Atlanta feels different right now. Atlanta feels like a hybrid of a super speedway and a regular speedway. It races more similarly to a super speedway, but there are differences in my opinion, but they're, they're small differences, but there are differences. But Cindric did a masterful job today, leading laps, being up front, and then once again, being up front when it mattered, made a fantastic move to go four wide for the lead at one point. I mean, this race had everything, I'm telling you. 
four wide for the lead. It was amazing. Fifth place, Bubba Wallace spun out early in this race, was involved in that lap two wreck, uh, had a speeding penalty and went a lap down and rallies back for a top five. Back-to-back -back top fives for Bubba Wallace and the 23-11 team. Great start to the year for them. I mean, seriously, really good start to the year. Sixth place, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. No shock to see him up front at this kind of race. Seventh place, Daniel Suarez's teammate Ross Chastain was involved in some incidents today. Had a penalty today, just like Bubba Wallace. Comes back to finish seventh. Eighth place, Michael McDowell started on pole in this race. Led a bunch of laps, just like his teammate Todd Gilliland. In fact, today, this is the most laps led in a single race by Front Row Motorsports. Gilliland led 57, I think. Uh, McDowell led over 30 laps. It was a career day for Front Row as a team. They didn't get the checkered flag, but they did get a top 10. They led a bunch of laps. In fact, McDowell won stage one. This move to be a tier one Ford team is proving to be good so far for Ford. But then again, let's see how they do at the intermediates and the short tracks. Ninth place, Chris Buescher involved in multiple incidents today. I'm going to say this about a lot of guys. Spun out by himself early in this race, was involved in a wreck at the last lap of stage two where Joey Logano just wrecked himself into Chris Buescher, apparently. And Busher's able to rally, come back, and finish in the top ten. Ty Gibbs, don't think I heard his name once today but he finishes in the top 10. Harrison Burton involved in multiple incidents. I'm telling you, this is going to be a lot of guys in the field. Finishes 11th, a very good result after a disappointing Daytona 500 last week. Martin Truex Jr. 12th was in contention for the win at a super speedway and didn't crash. He got shuffled way out of line by Daniel Suarez, but he didn't crash. For Martin Truex Jr., that's basically a win. It's basically a win because he always crashes at these super speedways. 13th, Corey LaJoy, back-to-back -to -back top 15s for him to start off the season. 14th, Kaz Grala was in the top 10 at some points of this race. Where did that come from? 15th, Chase Elliott was in like 17 different crashes today. Not really, I think it was like four. But uh, got spun by Ross Chastain, got clipped in the back end of a big wreck, um, was involved in that lap two incident, and I think there's one more I'm forgetting. I think he's ready to go home. Well, he kind of is home because it's Georgia, but you get my point. 16th, Ryan Priest. 17th, William Byron. Him and Michael McDowell had a really odd incident about halfway through this race. Coming to pit, green flag pit stops. I texted one of my friends this the other day. I said, I hope there's green flag pit stops at this race because I know it's going to be real wacky and real dumb. And that's about what happened. Michael McDowell coming down the back straight because they used that long pit road to use the apron in three and four. Locks up and spins out and takes William Byron with him. I don't know what else to tell you. It was weird. 18th, Daniel Hemrick. 19th, Carson Hosevar. 20th, Justin Haley. Uh, good runs for them. Justin Haley got up to the top 10 at some points in this race. Hosevar went flying at one point in this race. 21st, John Hunter Nemechek. 22nd, Austin Dillon involved in that lap two crash. Once again, just like Burton, disappointment in the Daytona 500 with a lap five crash. Seemed like it was going to be the same, but uh, Dillon can't recover as much as Burton, but 22nd. 23rd, Denny Hamlin led some laps in this race, was involved in multiple incidents. He had a spin by himself where he just kind of cleared himself in front of Kyle Busch, or Kyle Busch came up, he came down. It was one of those things that was just an accident, a misjudgment. Um, he was involved in a wreck at the end of lap, the last lap of stage two with Busher and Logano, and then Chase Briscoe just got over aggressive and Hamlin got involved in that. So uh, 23rd for Hamlin, 24th for BJ McLeod, solid run for BJ McLeod. 25th, Eric Jones, 26th. Todd! Oh, man. I made that poster last July at Atlanta that said Todd Gillen will win this race. I guarantee it. I was very wrong then. But it would have been a little bit closer if he performed like this. Career day for Todd Gillen. Leads 57 laps. Once again, I'm not sure if that number is correct. Is a master up front in front of the field, controlling the lanes, controlling the restarts, doing everything right. Gets shuffled back later on in the race, gets involved in one of the stupid wrecks, has a flat tire late in a run, and has to go a couple laps down to go fix the problem. Regardless, keep your head held uh, high, Todd Gilliland. Career day, led a career high, led more laps today than he led his entire Cup Series career, more than double actually. He led 11 laps in 2022, he led zero laps in 2023, he led 16 laps of the Daytona 500, he led 57 today. 
career day for Todd Gilliland. 27th, Alex Bowman, after finishing runner-up in the Daytona 500, gets wrecked out of this one, but he finishes the race five laps down. 28th, Joey Logano. Joey Logano involved in that late race wreck at the end of stage two, where he just wrecks himself straight up, wrecks himself, goes a multiple laps down. Josh Berry involved in a couple of incidents, the big one happening with about 10, 15 to go. Uh, just broke a toe link or something. Tyler Reddick involved in that early wreck. Uh, Chase Briscoe wrecked himself. Uh, he was really strong, really fast, but he was making over-aggressive moves. But ultimately, there was one that just, he went too far, took himself and a lot of other cars with him. He finishes 31st. 32nd, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson wrecked at a super speedway. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Anyone? Anyone? Anyone surprised? No? No one surprised? Okay. But he did lead some laps today. He actually looked more competitive than usual. 33rd, Brad Keselowski took some cards with him again. 34th, Christopher Bell involved in that early wreck. 35th, Zane Smith. This is a weird one. Zane Smith was running top five early in this race, minding his own business, and then gets a little bit out of the groove, and he smacks the wall, and that was enough to kill his car. No caution for it, nothing, but it was enough to kill his car, and he was done. Really bizarre incident, if you ask me. 36th, Noah Gregson. 37th, Josh Williams. They both involved in that lap two crash. Uh, Gregson, uh, he had a great week last week, but unfortunate start this week. Uh, and then Josh Williams, his first point start with Colleague. He ultimately does not finish. But oh my goodness. Oh my good. I, this race, man. It. I'm going to remember this race for a long time. When I say an all-time great finish, I mean it. That was incredible. It was 10 out of 10. The racing itself throughout the day was fantastic. And we had a fun winner, which, you know, that's a bonus point. That's always fun. But the racing itself was great. We got to see the finish last week. So many people with a sour taste in their mouth last week after the Daytona 500 saying, Oh, we didn't get to see it come to the green at the checkered flag. Oh, what a boring finish. The race sucked. When it was actually a great race, just the boring, the, the finish was boring and sucked. This week we got both. We got a fantastic race. It didn't get too out of control. We had an iconic finish and we had a fun winner. I have zero complaints about this race. So let me know what your thoughts were in the comments. I'm going to remember this one for a long time. I know it's only race two, but it's up there for uh, race of the year candidate already. So what a race. What a day. Daniel Suarez, your winner. Uh, we've got another race next week, Las Vegas, all three series. Once again, it'll be a fun one. Um, so yeah, I'll let you guys know any news coming out this week. We didn't even talk about it because the race was so fantastic. Joey Logano had to drop to the rear today because of an illegal glove. I kid you not. We will talk more about it during the penalty report later this week because there could be more penalties. But he had to do a pass through. He had to start at the rear of the field after starting on the front row. And he got lucky with that early caution. He was able to rally back, yada, yada, yada. He wrecked himself. So later in this week, we may have a couple of penalties in the penalty report. We're going to have some fun news. And I will let you guys know anything else uh, later on. So thanks for watching.